Hello friends, my name's Surreal Emil. Now, if you want a fast executive saloon car, you're probably going to be looking towards the Germans. From fast BMWs to Audis, there are plenty of choice. But what if you don't want something German? Well, unfortunately for you, there isn't much choice. But we do have one of the only alternatives here today. This is the Jaguar XFRS, and the first thing you'll notice is that it doesn't look too serious. One of the only downsides to the usual Germans is that they are a bit on the serious side. And while this doesn't particularly look serious, with the bold blue paint and the huge wing on the back, it manages to look a little ridiculous, but still fantastic at the same time. I think this might be the best looking of the current crop of sports saloons. While the outside is outlandish, the inside is very businesslike, and the on-paper performance is actually quite serious. With the same supercharged 5 litre V8 engine we see in every hardcore Jag, it not only sounds amazing, but also produces 550 horsepower and 502 pounds feet of torque. This all means the XFRS can do the 0 to 60 mile an hour sprint in 3.9 seconds and carry on past the 200 miles per hour barrier to reach 202 miles per hour. Power goes through the rear wheels, like with most of the high performance Jaguars. And while weight is on the heavy side at 4,380 pounds, in this class of vehicle, this is actually quite average. Now with all of the stats out of the way, what does this car actually drive like? Well, I'm pleased to say that that big wing must be doing something, because the XFRS has very good handling. While you might expect oversteer, the XFRS is actually quite well behaved, with some notable understeer being the only real issue when going through the corners. Once you are out of the corner, the straight line speed is good, as you would expect, and once you reach another corner, the brakes are surprisingly good. The only real downside to the Jag is that you do feel the car's weight, and while this can make the car easier to drive, you can't be quite as quick through the corners as you'd like. So the Jag is good, but can it compete with the benchmark of the sports saloons? This, as you'll probably know, is the BMW M5, and ever since the first generation from 1985, the M5 has been the car to beat in this segment, with very few cars being able to genuinely rival it. While the Jag looks like a bit of fun, the M5 is all business, with the only distinctions between this and a normal 5 series being some big alloys and a handful of M5 badges. However, don't let the drab appearance fool you. With its 552 horsepower twin turbocharged V8, the M5 will run rings around some supercars, and with a 0 to 60 miles per hour time of 4.1 seconds and a top speed of 197 miles per hour, it'll scare them off for good. Still, these stats aren't as impressive as the Jags, so maybe the plucky Brit has got a shot. Well, when it comes to a track, you can certainly feel the difference between the Jag and the Beamer's driving styles. While the Jag feels heavy but has superb handling, the M5 feels almost sports car like. While it may weigh 4,123 pounds, you don't feel it. In fact, the car feels a thousand pounds lighter than it actually is. While this means the BMW doesn't suffer from understeer, the opposite is present the oversteer. The M5 is prone to it, and it doesn't take much persuasion for the rear end to break loose, although it is reasonably easy to control should this happen. Other than that, it's very similar to a Jag. Straight line speed is great, and it has good brakes. So will it blast around our track? Separate these two. Up first was the Jaguar XFRS. Now, it'll be interesting to see the contrast between these two cars. One's biased towards understeer, one's biased towards oversteer. So maybe this will answer the question of which steer truly is better and which one makes a faster lap time. Coming around the first corner, the XFRS is a little bit understeery, but no real drama from the car. There's not as much drama as you'd expect from a 550 horsepower Super Jag. Around the second corner, no real issue, bit of tyre smoke there, but uh, nothing, no step outs or anything like that. This is a pretty controlled looking lap so far. The good straight line speed there and the good brakes means that you can brake super late into here. These cars will be good on the straights around Hammerhead, no real issues to speak of. You would expect the car to be understeering through Hammerhead, but not particularly. Now one place the XFRS did struggle was through the follow through, this car just could not take the amount of speed you'd like. 
We've seen this before with the Chevrolet Camaro ZL1 back in Forza Motorsport 5. That car was an extremely nice handling car, but it was a little bit on the heavy side and it felt relatively heavy, so that meant it wasn't particularly quick around the Top Gear test track. The question is, will the XFRS be quick around here, around the last corner? Yeah, no real dramas on that lap at all. Next up, we've got the M5, the big black M5. Uh, now, it will be interesting to see how this car handles. It has been around the Top Gear track a few times in previous seasons, and it has performed relatively well. So, uh, let's see what happens here through the first corner. No real drama to speak of. Oh, there's a little bit of opposite lock going on on the way out there, but nothing too major. Breaking into the second corner. Whoop, there we go. There's the tail. <laughs> the tail has come out on the M5. As I said, this car is extremely easy to break free. And it seems to do it with um, not very much consistency. It will just randomly snap out, which is a bit unfortunate. Uh, weight transfer also seems a little dodgy on this car. Through Hammerhead, a little more tyre smoke, but nothing major coming out of there. Nope, no real difficulties to report on. Now through the follow-through, this is where this car will get its speed over the Jaguar. The steering is much lighter in the M5, meaning you can carry more speed through follow-through. Through the tyres, it's quick. It's also uh, got a bit of tyre smoke going on. I can't imagine that was particularly fun through there. Breaking into the second to last corner. Load of speed being taken through there and a very, very clean line as well. And around the last corner, the M5 is clean and over the line. Anyways, the BMW M5 goes into 57th with a 121.363. Beats the Jag by almost a second. The Jaguar is in 63rd with a 122.345. Yeah, I wasn't quite expecting the times to be that different. Uh, there's a full second between them. There's an Audi RS4 there as well, BMW M4. So similar sort of cars to the Jag. Ultimately though, which of these cars would I rather have? Well... If you've been watching this channel for any period of time, this won't come as a surprise to you. I'd much rather have the Jag. The Jag is just a much better looking car in my opinion. It's much nicer to drive. And it's just got more personality to it. While the BMW M5 is a beautiful piece of technology and it's an absolutely fantastic car, don't get me wrong. The Jag still has that something that the M5 just doesn't. So, there you go. Tell me down below in the comments section which one you'd rather have. And if you've got any cars you'd like me to review, just write them down in the comment section below. But anyway, friends, I want to thank you all very much for watching. My name's been The Real Emil. Until next time, farewell.